Hello, and welcome to Don't Do This Guide, your go-to place for smart, sustainable gardening tips. In this channel, we'll delve into the science behind effective gardening practices so you can understand exactly what your plants need to thrive. If you're tired of trial and error gardening and ready to unlock the secrets of a truly bountiful harvest, you've come to the right place. We'll explore everything from choosing the right soil to understanding the needs of your plants, ensuring they have the best possible environment to flourish. So if you're ready to take your gardening to the next level, hit that subscribe button and let's grow the right way. Now you might wonder why container gardening is so effective. Well, it all comes down to understanding how roots behave in a confined environment. In open ground, roots can spread far and wide, seeking out nutrients and moisture. But in a container, the roots encounter the walls of their pot. And this is where the magic happens. This confinement encourages the roots to form a denser, more fibrous network within the pot. This density allows the plant to access nutrients and water more efficiently. Think of it like having a shorter commute to work. Everything is closer at hand. This means your plants can focus their energy on growing big, healthy leaves and producing an abundance of delicious vegetables. When roots are allowed to grow too freely, they can sometimes become lazy, leading to less efficient nutrient uptake. In a container, the roots are kept on their toes, constantly encountering the edges of their space, prompting them to branch out and explore every nook and cranny for sustenance. It's all about understanding the science behind the roots and working with nature to create the ideal growing environment. Now let's talk about soil, or rather potting mix. This is the lifeblood of your container garden and choosing the right one is absolutely crucial. In a container, your plants are entirely dependent on the nutrients you provide in that confined space. So, what makes a good potting mix? It's all about finding the right balance of drainage, aeration, and nutrient retention. Think of it like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You don't want it too dense or the roots will suffocate. You don't want it too loose or the water will run straight through. You need something that's just right. A good potting mix will typically contain a blend of organic matter like peat moss or coco coir, which helps retain moisture, and inorganic materials like perlite or vermiculite, which improve drainage and aeration. Squeeze a handful of the potting mix. It should feel light and fluffy, not heavy and compacted. When you wet it, the water should drain through at a steady rate, leaving the mix moist but not waterlogged. The right potting mix will provide the perfect foundation for your plants to thrive, ensuring they have access to the nutrients they need to grow strong and healthy. Now let's talk pots. Choosing the right size pot for your plants is a bit like finding the right shoes. It needs to be a comfortable fit. Too small, and the roots will become cramped and stressed. Too large, and you risk the soil staying wet for too long, leading to root rot. Fast-growing vegetables like tomatoes and cucumbers will need larger pots than slower-growing herbs or salad greens. As a general rule of thumb, start your seedlings in smaller pots and gradually pot them up as they grow. This allows the roots to establish themselves properly without becoming overwhelmed by too much space. Slightly underpotting your plants can actually encourage more vigorous growth. When roots are slightly restricted, it triggers a process called air pruning, leading to a more branched and fibrous root system. Keep a close eye on its growth and be prepared to pot it up if you see roots circling around the bottom of the pot, or if the plant seems to be drying out too quickly. Choosing the right pot size is all about finding that sweet spot, providing enough space for the roots to develop, while also encouraging healthy, controlled growth. Now let's talk about drainage, a topic that often sends shivers down the spine of even the most experienced gardener. In the world of container gardening, drainage is paramount. It's the difference between thriving plants and soggy, lifeless pots. As efficient as dense root systems are at absorbing water, they're also susceptible to root rot if the soil stays too wet for too long. So, how do we ensure proper drainage? Firstly, always choose pots with drainage holes. Add a layer of drainage material to the bottom of your pots. This could be anything from broken terracotta pots to gravel, or even packing peanuts. This layer creates air pockets at the bottom of the pot, allowing excess water to drain away freely. Choose a well-draining potting mix that retains moisture without becoming waterlogged. Just as important as avoiding overwatering is preventing underwatering. When the soil in a container dries out completely, it can actually become hydrophobic, meaning it repels water rather than absorbing it. Water your plants thoroughly when the top inch or two of soil feels dry to the touch. 
and don't be afraid to give them a good soak. Water deeply and allow the excess to drain away. Now let's talk about light and heat. Most vegetables need at least six hours of sunlight per day, so choose a bright sunny spot for your containers. If you're short on space or live in a shady area, choose varieties that are better suited to lower light conditions. Containers can heat up quickly in direct sunlight, especially those made of dark materials like plastic or metal. This can stress your plants and even cook the roots. To avoid this, choose light-colored pots or use shading techniques during the hottest part of the day. You can drape shade cloth over your plants or simply move them to a shadier spot. Some plants, like peppers and tomatoes, thrive in warmth. If you live in a cooler climate, place your pots in a sunny sheltered spot and the containers will act like mini greenhouses, warming the soil and creating a cozy environment for your heat-loving crops. Understanding the light and heat requirements of your plants and making adjustments to their environment is key to successful container gardening. Now let's talk about feeding your plants. In a container, your plants are entirely reliant on you for their nutritional needs. There's no vast reservoir of soil to draw from, so regular fertilization is essential. Nutrients behave differently in containers than they do in the ground. In the ground, nutrients are constantly being replenished by decomposing organic matter and the activity of beneficial microorganisms. But in a container, this natural cycle is disrupted. Nutrients are used up more quickly, and they can also be leached away with each watering. Slow-release fertilizers provide a steady supply of nutrients throughout the growing season, while liquid fertilizers provide a quick boost of nutrients and are ideal for giving your plants a pick-me-up during periods of rapid growth. Whichever method you choose, the key is to fertilize regularly and consistently. A little and often is the best approach. Now let's have a look at some common scientific mistakes people often make in pot gardening. One of the most frequent mistakes is overwatering. Overwatering leads to waterlogged soil, which suffocates the roots and creates the perfect breeding ground for root rot. Another common mistake is using the wrong potting mix. We need a mix that's just right, well-draining, yet moisture retentive. Using a heavy, compacted soil will only lead to drainage problems and unhappy plants. And let's not forget about pot size. Cramming a large plant into a small pot is like expecting it to live in a tiny house. It's just not going to thrive. Regular fertilization is essential to replenish the nutrients that are depleted from the soil. Plants need sunlight to photosynthesize and produce energy. By being mindful of these common mistakes, we can create a more conducive environment for our plants to flourish. Now let's delve into some more advanced techniques for optimizing growth in your container garden. Firstly, let's talk about pH. pH is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of the soil, and it plays a crucial role in nutrient availability. Different plants have different pH preferences, so it's important to choose a potting mix that's suitable for the crops you're growing. You can test your soil pH using a simple pH testing kit. If the pH is off, you can adjust it using amendments like lime to raise the pH or sulfur to lower it. Next, let's consider airflow. In a container, airflow can be limited, especially if the plants are crowded together. To improve airflow, space your containers adequately and avoid overcrowding. Companion planting is the practice of growing different plants together that benefit each other in some way. By paying attention to these finer details, we can create a truly thriving ecosystem in our container gardens. There you have it, the real science behind successful pot gardening. Remember, it's all about understanding the needs of your plants and creating an environment where they can thrive. Master these principles and your vegetables will thank you with a bumper harvest. From choosing the right soil to understanding how roots behave in containers, every step plays a vital role in your gardening success. If you found value in this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and drop your questions or successes in the comments below. Happy gardening.